Ah, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. I want to thank you guys for liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I sincerely appreciate that. Um, today, what we're going to be jumping into, we're talking a little bit about the purging process. Um, we got a student from Aquaponics Paradise, um, Jonas, what's going on Jonas, asking a follow-up question about the purging process and what can be done with the purging water. So that's what we're going to jump into right now. So let's get right into the question. All right, so the question says, what do you do with the purging water? Can you drain back the water from the purging process into the system to minimize the water use? So for those of you out there that are unfamiliar with what purging is, this is something that's going to be important um, for you to do if you want to have you know, good tasting fish for the most part. Sometimes you don't have to do the purging, but it it's all depends on, you know, your stock, fish stocking density, how much feed you're putting in there. It's going to depend, but to be on the safe side, you're going to want to, you know, uh, have a purging phase um, when it comes to dealing with your fish and harvesting your fish. So basically what the purging is doing is it's purifying or flushing out the uh, pollutants from the fish. When you raise them in a recirculating system in the close quarters, they tend to get these off flavors, these muddy type of flavors from the, you know, the uh, high concentration of nutrients. You got uh, cyanobacteria. Um, you got other types of algae that are involved in creating these compounds that create that toxic, I mean, uh, um, that uh, muddy type of off flavor when dealing with fish. So you purge them, put them in a separate tank, let them release all the, uh, the pollutants out. You uh, uh, get rid of the water, replenish the water. You do that on a co uh, consistent basis. So they get all of it out of their system. And it also helps when you're filleting the fish. You know, it just helps it, makes it clean, makes the process clean uh, as a whole. So that's what he's referring to. When you put them in the tank and you flush out that water, because you're going to be doing that pretty much up to about, you know, five to seven days, getting rid of the water, taking out um, a certain amount of water and replenishing it. That water that's taken out, he's asking, is that okay to put back into the aquaponic system? Basically using that as a top off source for your aquaponic system. And to answer that question, um, it's yes, you are able to use that. Now you have to understand that when you're doing the purging process, those pollutants that are in the water, those are the same, um, what you would what they classified as pollutants, but they're the same pretty much uh, nutrients that are going to be in the main system. So basically you're just reintroducing those back into your aquaponic system. So there's no harm, no foul in doing that. But what you have to realize is that introducing that water back in there, there's going to be some level of solids that are in there. So what you're going to want to do for best practices is to filter those solids out before you place them back into your aquaponic system and then you could use the use that uh that water as um, a, a top off source and i do it more so for the nft back here when i do the purging i'll use some of that water and put it back into the nft because the sump is underground so it's easy i place the purging tank on top of it on top of the sump and then th some of that water i will put back into the tank so there's nothing wrong with doing that just keep in mind that there are some solids that are in there that you, you're gonna wanna try to remove before you place it back into that, um, into that system. All right, so hopefully that helps with that. It says, um, the only problem I can think of is that the sump needs to be able to handle the amount of water. Now this is true, this is very true. When you're placing that top off water back in there, depending on how much water you use for your purging process, because you're not gonna have them, you're not gonna be stocking them densely as you do in, uh, in your, um, your main grow area. So it's gonna be uh, a large, relatively larger amount of water in there compared to the amount of fish that you have in there. So when you're, it could be a, a decent amount of water that you could be flushing into that system. So, you know, it would be more than what you would typically top off with is what I'm saying. So you're gonna wanna have a sump tank or you're gonna wanna have enough room in the sump tank to be able to accommodate that water. But here's the thing, if you don't have enough room in the sump tank, 
which I do for the most part. Um, but if you don't have enough, then what you can do is you can use an external tank and place that water in there if you're determined to use that water as the top off source. So you can place it in there and then when you see your sump level start to, uh, to, to, to um, start to decrease, then you can just take that water and you can introduce it in, um, into your sump and you can do it using that means and that will work too. So that's basically what I would um, say in regards to the purging water and bringing it back to your, your sump or bringing it back to your main aquaponic system. There's something, there, that's something that you definitely can do. Just be mindful of the solids. Try to uh, remove as, mu as much solids as you can before you bring it back in the system. But that water um, is definitely usable. Um, so with that being said, Jonas, I've hopefully that has helped you out. Um, anyone else that's in aquaponic paradise, make sure you guys leave your uh, questions um, in, in the aquaponic God form. So therefore, I know that it's one of the students that's asking the questions and I can answer you guys questions um, you know, uh, at a faster time than what I would answer anyone else that's asking it just in the, in the comment section off of YouTube or Facebook. So keep that in mind. Keep those questions in the aquaponic God form. And then um, if I do a video on that, I'll put you guys in front of the line and uh, help you guys out first. So with that being said, if any of you guys else out there have questions, you guys can be sure to leave a, um, a comment in the comment section below. And then I'll, I'll pick whichever one, you know, the pertinent questions and then answer it and help you guys out to the best of my ability. And then we can keep furthering on, you know, the aquaponic information and keep bringing it out. You know, so with that being said, also check out the school of aquaponics.com. We got free and paid courses there to help you learn the fundamentals of aquaponics, which is what is necessary to really start growing with aquaponics. Skip all the other stuff, get right to it. It's going to teach you the fundamentals and help you out tremendously on your journey with aquaponics. Right. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys again for liking, subscribing to the channel. And I sincerely appreciate it. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car.